On the Racing Insiders this week, the Pirelli World Challenge at Sonoma. We've got a full report. It's controversy. Black flags ignored. A different winner. You'll love this story. V8 Supercars went in 360. A different winner there, too. Good story. Good video. Rally America, a big championship that's coming down to the final event. Ken Block wins his third straight event. World Rally Championship in Germany, we get a first-time winner there, Danny Sordo. And are you kidding me? That's all coming up. The Racing Insiders is next. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders, the only place in broadcasting where you're going to get sports car content, racing content, every week. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles, Peter Keene is in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and Jim Daniels is in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's start right off with the Pirelli World Challenge event in Sonoma, a huge race, a big win for Andy Pilgrim. Second was Duncan Indy, a big run for him, and James Sofronis comes through the field to keep his fight on for a championship. Jim, Peter, what do you think about this? Peter, let's start with you. What do you think about this race, a big race in Sonoma? Well, according to Jim, there's big controversy there on the on the GT race. I was I was really paying attention to that TC and TCB race. Man, that was great battles. Of course, the Civics ran away with TC, and uh, they don't seem to be able to stop Ernie Francis. So that's what that's World Challenge. We've got Jeff Lepper from the Pirelli World Challenge series with Jim. Jim, let's get into this interview right away. Well, thanks, Bill. I got Jeff Lepper here with the uh, Pirelli World Challenge. Uh, a big weekend, the racing, uh, Jeff, with the TC and TCB cars yesterday, GT today. I got so many notes in so little time. But first, tell me about that turn seven and the incidents, and, uh, and then the carnage and mechanicals seem to be the story of the race both days. Yeah, I'll tell you what, with our GT GTS race that just took place, it was pure pandemonium with points leader Johnny O'Connell taken out in turn number three with an accident with points leader in GTS, Jack Baldwin as well. We had the turn seven with James Safrana spinning. We had cars going everywhere. It was pure pandemonium if you watched it live at WorldChallengeTV.com. It absolutely it was. And poor Johnny, I don't know if he's jinxing himself. He made a Facebook post that said, uh, Sonoma, oops, Sears Point. Uh, that's how he said it. And he said, focused, uh, must do well. And, and darn, if you didn't go out there in the first lap and have an issue. The TCB, Ernie Francis Jr., a lot of people taking a shot at him this year about illegalities. Kid keeps passing tech, keeps winning. He's not qualifying great all the time, but keeps pulling the wins out of the bag. What's the deal with him? Is he re the real deal here? I think he is, man. 15 years old in that hydraulic jeans, Mazda Speed 2. You can't go wrong with uh, picking him to win each event. He's a factor all the time. He had to earn his two wins here, though, this weekend. Well, I'm going to tell you about earning wins this weekend. I'm glad you said that. The Twitters among the crew people are talking about balance of performing Aston Martin and Davis. Um, you got some guys been running the series all year, Oshin, Andy Lee, uh, et cetera, uh, and Wilkes, uh, Janssen. Uh, this guy comes in. He's not been racing a lot, and I know him personally. We've raced as racing buddies for a long time, but he hadn't had a lot of seat time in the last few years. Comes in and dominates GTS. What's the scuttlebutt on that in the paddock? Well, I'll tell you what, Brandon Davis is not, uh, you know, flown into this or dropped into this. This was something that the team worked on all season long. They made their debut at Long Beach. They practiced in this car. They tested in the car. He coached his two teammates, Mark Clinton and Drew Ricketts, all season long. This is as close to home track as Long Beach is for the Pirelli World Challenge that he comes to. He's a past Pirelli World Challenge champion. I don't see a problem. Yeah, you know, personally, I don't either. He's a good guy. I know for a fact he's a good shoe. We've overlaid data occasionally. And so uh, maybe that'll put an end to some of the Twitter that's already begun here 30 minutes after the race. So another big thing that's being talked about is car count. Jeff, we, you know, we had a, you look at Coda at some of the other events. You look here, I think we had nine TC cars, seven finished the race. Uh, you had uh, 13 GT cars. Looks like the, the bright spot. Thank goodness that the, the management decided to take on TCB. We had 16 TCB cars. You think this has to do anything with the merger or just the toe out to the West Coast among people who aren't in the championship hunt? Give us some insight. 
I've never liked having West Coast races near the end of the season. You got guys that want to go racing, but you got guys trying to save budgets for next year. Hey, we're sort of out of the championship. We're an East Coast team. It's hard for us to justify driving all the way to the West Coast when we're really the only thing we could possibly get out of it is maybe a race win, maybe a podium. We're already out of the championship. Let's save our money. Let's go for next year. Right, and I can see that certainly in my past programs. If you're out of the hunt and you're looking for next year, you might spend time on the dyno or testing or rebuilding your program. Let me ask you about this. Put that third announcer there today, uh, today with you. I thought it was great. Is that going to be something we're going to see in the real broadcast, or is that just a one-off for this race? Man, the folks here at Sonoma Raceway are so great. They had David Key and, and, and Steve Long with us on the, all around the track, and it was great to get that. I would love to throw that aspect in. I think it makes it that much better. We have the same thing at Mid-Ohio that we were unable to implement. They have a great staff as well. Hey, anything's in the cards. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't want them to take my job, though. No, I understand that, and I don't think that'll happen, but it, it sure sounded good for you two to get a breather and get your wit about you as opposed to the constant call, I thought, as a fan of Pirelli World Challenge. Hey, thank you very much for coming on our show. We wish we could have you more. You're welcome any time. Is there anything you want to add at the end here about the next event? No, we got the Grand Prix of Houston coming up next. We got uh, a lot of great stories there. Boy, this championship up now really closes the gap between GT, GTS, and TCB. I think Ryan Winchester in Touring Car, we didn't mention him as well. He got the double race, weekend, uh, double race win in Touring Car. The championship is his in Houston. Well, Jeff, thanks very much. We're glad to have you on the show. What a race. Uh, Brandon Davis and Andy Lee really actually won at it in the first few laps. And Brandon pulled a move on the outside that uh, certainly shows why he's a past champion of Pirelli World Challenge. And then he just checked out. It's interesting to see those Aston Martins in the field. The GT4 format runs in GTS for you homeschoolers. The GT3 format runs in GT. This week it was fielded by Kevin Buckler. I don't recall the last time I've seen Kevin uh, actually drive a race. This guy's on NASCAR teams. Andy Lally raced with him forever. Uh, uh, he was out there, and that car is uh, pretty strong if Kevin Buckler can run around in seventh place in it and uh, mix it up uh, as rusty as I think he probably is just based on uh, the experience that he's had. Uh, Peter, what did you think about that uh, touring car race with uh, Michael Cooper has been dominating all year, and they couldn't put together two races this weekend either because of mechanicals or crashes? Well, that's what I, you know, there, there's been some people complaining about that Mazda, you know, that it's beating the Civics, but... You know, it was a Civic 1-2-3 today, but, you know, honestly, I guess Cooper had trouble. Like, he did make the grid, and then he had a mechanical in race two. Well, I guess, you know, sometimes the racing gods bite you. You know, it was kind of surprising to see that they well, didn't do a better job there. Well, listen, you, there's a, you have to do a great job. Carl Thompson, a good friend of mine, owner of Compass 360, they bring the right package every time they show up. That's why Cooper has been impressing me. Seems like they dropped the ball on mechanicals right. this weekend, though, because the MX-5s that they entered the field with in TC had trouble as well with Brad Adams. But interesting enough, maybe when we get back to Houston, we'll have a little bit larger fields, and uh, they can keep those cars together. Bill? You know, I like Brandon Davis. I like that black Mustang he won the championship with in 2009. I like Brandon. We've had a lot of conversations on and off the mic. He's going to run away from most guys, when, especially in that GTS field. I want to see him be successful in this Aston Martin. They didn't have a lot of success with it at Long Beach, but I want to see him be successful in that if we're allowed to cheer for it. That's who I'm going to cheer for. We've got a lot more on the Racing Insiders coming up, including V8 Supercars in Australia after this. Let us know what you think about what the Racing Insiders have to say. Tell us on Facebook and Twitter. Back to the Racing Insiders. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles with Peter Keen and Jim Daniels. Peter, let's go right to you. The V8 Supercars in Australia, a huge weekend, three races. How do you fit that in, NASCAR? <laughs> Peter, <Exactly. over> you. <laughs> no, Bill, I, I, every time I watch those V8 Supercars, it's impressive. I mean, they were on this little bull ring for a three-kilometer track, 
at Winton, and you know the conditions were treacherous. There must have been a ton of rain because anytime anybody got off, they'd get stuck in the mud. The thing that surprised me, and I'm sure Jim saw this as well, is how close the concrete barriers are to some of those corners. I mean, it seemed like it was within a matter of a few feet and you could get hit in concrete. There was no tires there at all. Um, once again, great battle. The biggest news, I think, is a Nissan 1-2 in race 25 on Saturday. You know, great deal for them. Moffitt wins his first V8 supercar and it gets his first win for Nissan. I guess his dad won the last time of V8 supercars in 1984, so that's a great deal for him. Um, the other big score is... Wincup had such a, a really bad weekend. I mean, essentially, he was leading the first race, you know, race 25, going away and broke something in the drivetrain. And then in race two, he crashed out. So, I mean, he, he had a tough weekend. I think he's still the points leader, but it's definitely closed some stuff up. Um, and then the other thing is, is Winterbottom finally re wins race 27. And, um, you know, that's his first win at Winton. Just great weekend. Unbelievable how close the fields are. I mean, those guys, 22 cars within like seven tenths at, on one of the qualifying grids. It's just crazy how close those guys are. And I love seeing them jump the curbs. Yeah, if anyone is a fan of road racing, you got to watch these guys. Haven't seen them at Coda, and we talked about it on previous shows that you can now download on our YouTube channel. Uh, the shock travel in those cars allowed them to do some crazy looking things over the curves. But funny thing was to me was uh, the, the mud and the conditions off track. The, uh, the One of the Kelly brothers found out first, and not only did he go off track and in, uh, in the accelerate, but he caught one of those walls that you mentioned. Of course, later in the same race, brother went out as well with a crash, so neither one of them finished the race. Neither one of those Nissans finished. Show favorites of part-time NASCAR drivers in road racing. Uh, the interesting thing to me is I've got to be thinking that Graham Rahal is somewhere tonight thinking he's fixing to win a race because we've gotten uh, James Courtney winning a race after 2.5 years in, in the Australian uh, V8 uh, Cadillac with Pilgrim winning after a, a well over a year. Graham Ray Hall, it's your turn. Bill? I'm sure he'd love to be in that list uh, also. But let me let me take a moment here. The thing I like most about V8 supercars, besides the close competition, these guys are incredible drivers, but they race on so many different kinds of tracks. They race on a big track like Circuit of the Americas here in the United States, and they race on the Winton track, which is a short bowling thing. People around the world should pay attention to this. It's really a test of driver skill, and when they get a champion, it's a real champion that's able to compete in any kind of environment. That's why I love the V8 supercars. Next on the Racing Insiders is our rally segment, Rally America, Ojibwe Rally in Minnesota, and Ger Rally Germany, the World Rally Championship, a new winner there. Coming up next, the Racing Insiders, right after this. This segment of the Racing Insiders was brought to you by GoRacingTV.com, for racers by racers. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. Peter Keene is in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and Jim Daniels is in Memphis, Tennessee. This is our rally segment, Rally America, the Ojibwe Forest Rally in northern Minnesota, second to the last round in the championship, a third straight win for Ken Block over David Higgins, the two-time defending champion with Subaru Rally Team USA, Block in his Ford Fiesta. Uh, fan favorite for me, for sure, uh, especially when, we, when we're following the rally cross in those X Games. Interesting to know that he went out first today. So this is a very dusty trail. Uh, those behind him kind of complain about the visibility. I think he had a little bit of an advantage by going out first. Not that he needs it. Uh, third consecutive win. There's a reason that I like him, Bill, and that uh, the, I'm following Rally because of that guy and Sebastian Loeb and those kind of folks, and uh, it's because he gets it done. He's a real driver. I really like that third place two-wheel drive Ford Fiesta. Fourth consecutive win. First time, I think, ever that they put a, a two-wheel drive car on the overall podium. Great job for Smith and Reeves. Bill? It's not the first time, but it's the first time in a very long time. Uh, in fact, Rod Millen's brother Steve once put a media car on the podium, uh, but that was back before the mud hardened. That was that long ago. <laughs> the big headlines, though, and I'm taking a, a big leap here, the big headlines was the third place driver, Brandon Reeves, who ran in the World Rally Championship last year from Australia. He finished third in a two-wheel drive Ford Fiesta, maybe half the horsepower and half the drive wheels. An incredible run for him. It's not a first for Rally America, but it's an incredible run. 
That's all for Rally America. Let's get to the World Rally Championship in Rally Germany. Very high-speed event, all pavement, but you don't make mistakes in Rally Germany because of these huge rocks, the Hinkle Stones that are right on the side of the road, a little history. They put these rocks there so that the German tank corps could learn how to stay on the road. Had some problems. The Volkswagen team, Sebastian Ogier, the leader in the championship, he went out early. He was leading early, but had a problem, and he was gone, gone, just like that. His teammate, Yari Mari Ladvila, he was running with the leaders. He was the leader of the event, had a very tight battle with Terry Neuville in the Ford, but he was gone. That left the uh, road to Danny Sordo with Citroen. He's never won a rally before. He started Sunday only eight tenths of a second ahead of Neuville, and the two of them went literally toe to toe. It was like Frazier and Foreman. Down goes Frazier. That was Neuville. He went down, and Sordo got his first win of the championship. It was a very popular win. Sordo has been a test driver for Citroen, and he's been carrying the spear for a long time, carrying the flag, but he gets his first win. Rally Germany, he kissed the trophy like it was his girlfriend. He may not let that go for a while. It was a huge, very popular win for Sordo. Novell was second, and uh, his teammate, uh, Sordo's teammate, Miko Hervinen, was third. Big win for Sordo. Coming up next, are you kidding me? What's going on in our minds? A busy sports weekend. Motorsports going on all over the globe from Germany to northern Minnesota. That's coming up right after this, the Racing Insiders. This segment was brought to you by the Sports Car Club of America. Are you kidding me? Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. Are you kidding me? This is becoming a big segment for me and us, I would imagine. Peter, what's on your mind? Hey, Bill, my are you kidding me is Ernie Francis Jr. in that T World Challenge, Pirelli World Challenge TCB race. I mean, we, we found a Mazda computer issue. They had a little bit of an advantage, and we've been pounding the weight on this Mazda 2 since the beginning of the season, and all the kid does is go out and win. We've, we've, they've torn down the motors. They, he passes tech every time. There's a lot of people complaining about it, but the kid just wins. I mean, I, I, my hat's off to him. A 15-year-old kid, you know, a bright star in World Challenge, and, you know, there's a lot to be said. You know, there's people that are down-talking his team and everything, but you got to give the kid credit. Even with all the pressure and everybody complaining, he just wins. Jim, how about you? Hey, are you kidding me? Mine centered around Pirelli World Challenge as well. First off, Peter, I'm not surprised the kid's wins. He was trained in Spec Miata. Now, that said... <laughs> Balance of performance. I'm back on balance of performance. I know Jeff was on the show earlier. He talked about that the Brandon has done his homework, and I know that they have. The guy is a past champion, but I'm telling you, if I've got $150,000 spec Camaros out there and Mustangs, and I'm running and someone comes in, it doesn't matter what they've done in the past. or other champions like Lawson Auction back in that field, too. I know this is going to be a problem in the paddock. Twitter is already lit up like it's unbelievable, but more so over Pirelli World Challenge. Seven TC cars. What's wrong with you racing teams out there? Those cars can be bought for nothing. The, every manufacturer and their brother are making spec chassis. The contingencies are big. The purses are good. The venues are great. And it's an all-out war for an hour. And you don't have to change drivers. Get some cars on these tracks, guys, and get some teams going. Bill? <laughs> Tell them, Jim. Don't let them get away with that. My Are You Kidding Me is a little takeoff from what uh, Peter was talking about. Got a new driver in the Ojibwe Forest Rally, Nick Roberts, Rookie of the Year candidate, probably going to be Rookie of the Year. He may have sealed that this weekend, winning the super production category. It's an incredible story. I think he went to his first rally just about a year ago, got involved in it, and this time, it wasn't a sense some of the major drivers in super production fell out, including the defending champion Lachlan O'Sullivan and his co-driver Scott Putnam. But what Nick Roberts did before Lachlan left was match him for stage times. It was a great run. The kid deserved the win. The rally didn't stop with him in first place. He deserved the win. 
He's probably going to be rookie of the year, and he's going to make some noise in the Rally America Championship. Good for him. I love seeing new guys step up to the plate and make their name known. Nick Roberts, remember that name. That's Are You Kidding Me for this week. We've still got more coming on The Racing Insider right after this. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. This is our calendar for this week. We've got the ALMS round in Baltimore, a street race. I'll be there getting a lot of interviews for the weeks ahead from some of the uh, American Le Mans Series drivers and especially want to talk to Lucas Lure, who ran in the IndyCar race at Sonoma last weekend. But the big story might be Rallycross, the big rallycross event, the European Rallycross Championship in France. Some of the biggest names in racing, Sebastian Loeb, Petter Salberg, Chris Meek, the uh, Tanner Faust is going to be there. It's supposed to be there. It's going to be a huge weekend for rallycross. We'll get a chance to see the heavyweights battle it out on the rallycross track. That's what's going on this weekend. What, how about you, Peter? What do you have on your calendar? Well, Bill, I'm heading down to Sebring and see how hot it's going to be, but I'm testing my runoffs package down there. Me and Irish Mike will be testing our cars and trying to be that last last test before we head off to Wisconsin for the 50th anniversary of the runoffs. Jim, how about you? Hey, I'm headed down to New Orleans to have a dat dog and do some coaches hand slapping and uh, remind Brad Adams that you got to keep four tires on the track at Sonoma in a Pirelli World Challenge race. Bill? What kind of dog are you going to have in New Orleans? It's a dat dog. Custom-made gourmet dogs are worth driving or flying to New Orleans whenever you can. <laughs> a dat dog. Now, there's a man who's going to leave the best barbecue in the country to go get a hot dog in New Orleans. That's our show for this week, The Racing Insiders. We've got gourmet as well as gourmet racing right here. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. Peter Keene is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Jim Daniels is in Memphis, Tennessee. We've had a great weekend. Hope to see you next week, The Racing Insiders. Until then, take care of each other, respect each other. Peace.